Thank you for having me. Um, I want to take one minute and reminisce. You know, I was here a year and a half ago, and the conference was much smaller. And I remember it was about a few days after we found out that there was going to be a split between Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV. And at the time, I was a little bummed out, or I was a little wary about what was going to happen. And in the time since, I remember that night, the very first night it happened, everyone said, we all finally agree that we all really like Bitcoin, so let's just build on top of it and let's stop trying to change Bitcoin. And now there's an insane amount of people here that all agree with that one vision, and I want to thank all the miners, the developers, and everyone that just loves Bitcoin as much as I do, uh, because without them it wouldn't be possible to be here. So my name's Connor Murray. I'm going to talk to you about our company, True Reviews, and how we're going to change the way that consumers and businesses interact with online reviews. I really like this comic here. Uh, Scott Adams is a pretty, pretty interesting thinker. You know, so businesses these days are more and more reliant on online reviews. And actually, studies show that the more reviews, that, uh, reviews themselves are more powerful than any advertising campaign that you can buy. And consumers, like 95% of consumers, will go online and look at reviews before making any business decision. But there's an overarching problem that not only are the incentives broken with online reviews, but there's no way to know if, if any review that you're reading is legitimate. And, and for all we know, businesses themselves are defaming other businesses, just like we see here with Dilbert. This is a problem pervasive on just about every review site. So on TripAdvisor, for example, studies show that maybe one in seven reviews are fake. And I first thought of this idea, I was on a trip in Italy, and uh, we had done a private tour with a tour guide, and at the end of the day, we had spent all day with him, and at the end of the day, the tour guide asked us, you know, please take the time, go home, and leave a thoughtful review, because my entire business is dependent on people reading TripAdvisor reviews. And, you know, we went up to the apartment, and I really thought about it, and if I really wanted to fully express my experience there, it would have taken about two hours of my time. We had a fantastic day, but to really express that to someone would take a substantial amount of my time. And I realized, well, this is broken. There's something broken here. There's really no incentive for me to take the time to write this positive review. You know, this fake review problem is pervasive across multiple platforms, you know, Facebook and Amazon. And as you can see here, studies show that there's like specific products, categories that have a large, large percentage of fake reviews, and I'm sure if you've ever been on Amazon reviews or Facebook or all that kind of stuff, you've seen just the terrible, terrible, clearly fake reviews for products. So this is an interesting uh, a story here. So uh, this is a story about the Bude Tunnel over in Cornwall, and it's essentially a plastic tunnel for shopping carts, right? But someone took the time to say that this was the greatest tourist attraction in Europe, and they wrote this this really long review saying this is the greatest thing that you could ever see, right? And I encourage you to go online and look at the reviews because they're, they're really funny. But TripAdvisor, so that made national news, right? All of a sudden, thousands of people were raving about the greatest tourist attraction in Europe, this plastic tunnel. And what TripAdvisor had to do is step in and say, hang on, we're going to actually shut down reviews uh, for this attraction, because it does not, con it's not showing firsthand experiences. And this is, actually happens all the time in the United States. Uh, a lot of times restaurants will make uh, national news for something not good, and then the social media army of social justice warriors come in and, you know, really attack their, their site, or the, their reviews, right? So this requires some third party to step in and say, and try and distinguish between real reviews and fake reviews, but who knows if they're actually getting it right? And overall, really, the incentives here are broken. As I mentioned, when I go home, there's very little incentive for me to take the time to leave some positive review or even jump through. Even three steps is probably too much. So ultimately, I think we can boil this down to two separate problems. We have the incentive problem, which is, is, is vast, more so than just the incentive for me to go home and write the review. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Then there's also the verification problem. There's really no way for me to verify what I'm reading is legitimate. So where does Bitcoin come in? Well, there's really three properties of Bitcoin that help us here. First, we have the economics, right? I mean, if you like Bitcoin, if you're familiar with Bitcoin, then you kind of understand this concept that we're marrying data and value, right? 
And that's really powerful. That means that we can start valuing uh, pieces of data more so than others, which means that better reviews we can start valuing over others. And we also have identity. So Bitcoin allows us to have identity, and, and we utilize PayMail specifically. We're using Money Button right now. We hope to integrate every wallet that's out there. But we want to have users have an on-chain identity with an attached reputation that they can carry across the platform. And this allows us to distinguish, you know, who has a, identity isn't just a pay mail. It's not just a public key. Identity is that people around you say, this is a, who this person is. This is a good person. So identity is a more complicated problem than just signing with a key, as I'm sure we're all aware here. And then lastly, we, we, we have tokenization and smart contracts available to us. So we're utilizing the Run platform. If you saw Brenton's uh, talk yesterday, Run is a very, very powerful tool. I'm going to explain to you how we're using tokenization to accomplish our goals. But first, we really need to step back and ask ourselves, what is a token? Because if you've been in this space for a long time, you'll come to understand that the definition of a token has been vastly vastly skewed. So if your first thought goes to the scam ICO market where billions of dollars were raised to never release a product, then stop, because that's not what I'm talking about when I speak of a token. We can actually can define a token very, very easily. It's a cryptographically unique digital representation of property. So we can start tokenizing property on the blockchain. And we use tokens all the time, right? So actually, even without a blockchain, if you go around using digital coupons and digital gift cards, those are a form of a token, right? Bitcoin itself or other digital forms of cash are tokens. And then we also have things like concert tickets, right? So that's another form of a, of a unique digital good that we can carry across devices. But we can start abstracting away from the digital world and into the physical world. So things like the wine bottles in your cupboard, right? We can start tokenizing those, uh, those pieces of property on the blockchain. We can start tokenizing your house on the blockchain, right? And creating some kind of pointer to that physical, physical piece of property. And we can zoom out a little bit more and start tokenizing the city that you live in. But I want you to go one step further. And this is something that I've had to learn with Bitcoin. It's, it's kind of a, a personal changing of how I view property. Property isn't just digital and physical. It's intellectual. So when you go home and you take time to write a review, that's not just data, that's property. That's something that only you could express. So we need to uh, put that on the blockchain in a way where you actually own it. And not just the meal that you purchase, right? But the experience that you had with your friends and your family and the emotions that you felt. Only you can express that, and that is your property. And then finally, you know, not just the cities that you visit, but really your itinerary, uh, the emotions you felt traveling those beautiful cities. Again, that's really something that belongs to you, and you should own what happens to it after you put it out in the world. So we have two really basic cornerstones of what we're building here. Number one, businesses can manage and own their property, and what I mean by that I'll explain in a second. But if you have a business on the blockchain, we want you to own that business. The pointer to that business is yours. And then finally, users own their intellectual property. We don't just want to have you uh, putting plain text on the blockchain and you hold some kind of decryption key for that plain text. We want you to actually own that data. So first, let me talk to you about how we're solving the verification problem. This is a, a really interesting problem to solve. Um, and if you ever bought something on Amazon, you'll usually see a, a, a distinguishing mechanism between verified reviews and unverified reviews. But Amazon makes this possible because they actually distribute the goods, right? So Amazon uh, can validate that they shipped you know, whatever you ordered to you, and then when you make the review, it's actually the person who purchased the product. So we want to take this and distribute it to any point of sale system in the world. Anything that's sold, we can start ver validating that the person leaving feedback about what they purchased actually purchase the good. So this is the way, so we're building a back-end server where at point of sale, we make a call into our server where we issue a Bitcoin transaction. But this transaction is tokenizing what happened. So for example, uh, let's assume you ate at a restaurant, right? We want to create some cryptographically unique digital representation of, for example, maybe you ordered a chicken wing, a beer, the date, the time, who is your server. All of this information we can put uh, as properties of this token. 
When you go home, you can spend this token to create the review. Now again, the token is just a way for us to represent what happened. It's not uh, something that's going to go up in value and make you rich and all that kind of good stuff. We're talking about a different uh, definition of a token. But this also means that, uh, separated from this, a business, for example, can incentivize you to take the time to go home and leave a review because they can unlock with a smart contract uh, maybe a, a dollar off coupon the next time you come. But that doesn't just incentivize good reviews. We're not just going to say, hey, I'm going to pay you all this money to come leave reviews for my business. I could leave the worst feedback possible for the business, and because it's locked up in a smart contract, I'll still unlock that dollar gift card if I choose to, to go back for whatever reason. So now this creates, uh, with this verification uh, platform, we can now create a link at point of sale to the feedback that is left for any product. This doesn't just have to be for a restaurant, for example. Any digital good sold can be done this way. And this allows us to use the blockchain in a way that's transparent and open. And it allows us to have that data available however we choose. So for example, if I'm the user leaving this feedback, I actually own this property. And that's powerful, because that means I can keep it private between me and the business. I can sell it to you to read. I can sell it to advertisers and all of that. All of that is actually owning your data. And this can you know, extend even to uh, wine, right? If I want to see the fee, uh, what does people think about the, uh, a bottle of wine from distribution to sale or whatever, we can track this along a supply chain as well. So that's where we're going. And where we are right now is uh, we're in an alpha stage. We've really been working hand in hand with Brenton from Run. Uh, and I encourage you, if, if you want to know more about Run, find him, find me. I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And we're, we're creating the first digital goods with Run where you own your intellectual property. So for example, you can go to truereviews.io right now, and you could find any Google searchable location or business and leave a review. Because this is a, a token in Run, I can edit the review. I can delete the review. And people can vote on my review, and I earn money every time a vote occurs. They can tip me for my review. I also maintain a reputation. So as I mentioned, we're not just talking about the identity of me as Connor with a public key. We're talking about identity tied to reputation. And then I can leave a vote for uh, any review. You know, we, don't, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel here and create our own database. Google has this nice database available. And we're going to tokenize that on the blockchain. So all across the world, we can take the Google identifiers for different locations and tokenize them on the blockchain. And just in a very short amount of time, with alpha software that if you have used it, you might have hit some bugs. You'll continue to hit bugs, and we'll continue fixing them. But we've gotten to really see all over the world different locations getting reviewed. And while you're here in London, you can go to truereviews.io slash CoinGeek, and you can see all the places around London that other Bitcoiners have reviewed. Um, and you can leave your own review as well. Maybe for the party tonight, you can tell us what you did. Uh, and, <laughs> and lastly, I, I just want to say, you know, please contact us. We're actually hiring. We want someone to join our team and work with us. You can go to truereviews.io and, and play with our software right now. Um, again, you, you might hit some bugs, and, and we'll keep fixing them so you can let us know. And if you're interested in, in, in contacting me, you can email me at connor at truereviews.io. Thank you. Hi, guys. I'm Johanna Bota from CoinGeek.com, and I am here with Connor, the founder of True Reviews. Can you tell us what True Reviews is and what it does? Yeah, so we're building a platform to eliminate fake reviews on the internet. We're solving that a few different ways. Number one, we want to introduce incentives into online reviews, right? So if you take the time to leave a review, you should get paid for that by other users that find it valuable. And then we also want to create a verification system. So we want a way to use the blockchain to validate that the person that actually purchased a product, for example, is the one leaving the review, right? And it's that way we don't have businesses that are paying for thousands and thousands of fake reviews. We can actually link it to point of sale and create some link between, yes, this good was purchased by this individual, and they're the ones leaving the feedback. Where did the idea to start True Reviews come from? Uh, well, it first came, I, I was... I was on a tour in Italy and a tour guide actually said, please go home and write a good review because that's my business model. Like, I literally can't get business without you taking the time to leave the review. And I went home and I was like, well, there's really no reason for me to do this except from the goodwill of my heart, right? Yeah. And, th and that's a problem because I think actually for the most part, the only incentive that exists to leave a review is a negative incentive is when you like want to be vengeful. Yes, I mean, I was going to ask you that because that's how I feel about reviews. It's, I always read negative reviews and I'm like, well, you must be really upset 
to have gone out of your way to write this, right? Exactly. The only time I've ever left an in-depth review was when I was very frustrated yeah. with the company. And that makes sense, right? I mean, time is money, time is valued. So I'm only going to take the time to actually do something that in-depth if I feel like I'm getting something out of it. And when I spite a business, I feel like I'm getting something out of it. And yeah. not necessarily when you're leaving a positive review, except for maybe that goodwill nature. Yeah. yeah. So let me see if I get this right. So I would be going on true reviews to leave a review, let's say about a tour in Italy, which I have done out of the goodwill of my heart. I did not get paid or a discount for this um, for this review. And then then I would just be getting a bit paid in Bitcoin um, by by any other users, or, but also, <laughs> like, well, so, so there's two things we're doing. So we're building a backend server, for example. We don't necessarily just want to be a new social media site. I think that requires a, to compete with TripAdvisor and Yelp with market effect. And I think that's going to be very difficult. So we want to build a backend platform that leverages the technology of the blockchain to both create incentives where you can get paid for what you're doing, but then also to validate the reviews are real. Then we want to build out the technology and then integrate with other services to do so. Um, so hopefully, ideally, you never would touch true reviews as a website. We we would just be powering the technology that earns you money when you leave reviews and, and things like that. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to touch upon? This is your platform to the millions of viewers of CoinGeek. <laughs> I, I am so happy that we have a Bitcoin that scales, that no one is changing, that allows for very complex, interesting use cases to emerge. And I'm just very happy that so many people here in London are clearly getting that. Obviously, right? I mean, the whole conference, two days, so many new innovations. It's very exciting. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the time.